fly on that airplane, but maybe some of you do, and we'd see the marketplace work itself out. I want to. I want to walk. I want to briskly walk through a, a metal detector, and then nobody wants to talk about 9/11 either. If guns were allowed on planes, 9/11 wouldn't have happened. And contrary to the movies, you know. Shooting a hole through the side of an airplane doesn't suck the entire airplane out. Uh, nobody wants to hear that. And yet, right after 9-11, the government did come up with, uh, with an idea, that they, a requirement, that cockpit doors be fortified. Impenetrable. That makes the difference. Arguably, an aircraft can never be used as a missile again because of that uh, initiative. I would have never signed the Patriot Act, um, and I would repeal the Patriot Act if given the chance I right now. <laughs> I really, really have questions and comments, and, uh, and so I'd like to hear your comment on this. But in a nutshell, isn't the Patriot Act really about denying due process? I mean, that's what it's really about. I and mean, that's what we need to ensure. Right? We're, we're, a con we're a constitutional republic. The Constitution says that we have due process, and yet that's, what's, that's what has gone out uh, the window. Military intervention. We need to bring an end to our military interventions. We need to recognize that as a consequence of our military interventions, we have millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that but for our military interventions would not otherwise exist. That we... Foreign aid. Foreign aid needs to stop. There's this notion that foreign aid is about helping, helping people, starving people, people that need medical assistance. Foreign aid is about propping up a foreign despot who's taken over from another foreign despot, but this foreign despot is a better foreign despot because we back this guy as opposed to the other guy. And this is just an endless cycle that goes on and on and on and on. And these drone attacks, just for a second, let's imagine that all of who we target in these drone attacks are guilty. And I, and I reject that completely, because they're not all guilty. We're humans, and humans are behind all of this, and we make mistakes. So not all of who we target are guilty, but let's just assume for a second that they are. We don't just take out the, we just, just don't take out the guilty person. We take out a quarter of a block. We take out all, we, we kill hundreds of innocent people, and because we do this, we make enemies of friends and family and co-workers to these people that are killed and just put the shoe on the other foot. If there were an occupying country of, of this country and our friends or family were killed, we would vow vengeance against that perpetrating uh, country, including giving of our own lives if that's what it took to achieve that vengeance. And that's exactly what we're perpetrating overseas. So the drones. The drones, there's no due process. Well, it's overseas. Well, we're killing a lot of people, and then now we get to now we get to domestic drones. And domestic drones, look, where's the due process? Can't somebody just look over this as opposed to who ultimately pulls the trigger? And is pulling the trigger domestically mean that innocents get taken out domestically and somebody's gonna make the decision that that's that that's good collateral damage? No! Somebody needs to oversee this, and this is just back to due process. You know, I've been really outspoken on the war on drugs since the war on drugs has been in existence. I really think that we need to legalize marijuana now. Earlier this ski season, I'm riding up the chairlift with this guy, and the guy looks over at me and goes, Man, you look like Gary Johnson. <laughs> I said, Oh man, I get that all the time. <laughs> he says, You are Gary Johnson. I says, Yeah, I am. <laughs> he says, No, Gary Johnson's a lot bigger than you are. <laughs> no, I'm Gary Johnson. He says, Man, will you, will you smoke a bowl with me? I'd be so honored. <laughs> so honored. smoke pot, but I'm working really hard to make that happen for you. So, 
So, uh, Colorado, state of Colorado and the state of Washington uh, voted to legalize marijuana. This is really, really positive. These are the first dominoes that are going to fall. All 50 states are going to fall in line. There are going to be a lot of reasons why and when everybody figures out that, uh, that everybody gets on an airplane to go to Denver for the weekend to chill out, <laughs> well, maybe they can chill out here as opposed to being in Denver. One of the big issues with uh, marijuana legalization is establishing impairment. Um, and it'll never be legal to smoke pot, become impaired, and get behind the wheel of a car, okay? It's just not going to happen. Or, or become impaired and do harm to anybody else. I mean, it's, that's going to always be against the law. But although I don't drink and I don't smoke pot, I have drank and I have smoked pot. And I found pot such a safer alternative than alcohol. I have always said, I have always said that uh, marijuana will lead to uh, less overall substance abuse because people will find it such a safer alternative than alcohol. And I don't want to make excuses here. Um, it was a different time. Uh, but as much as, as much marijuana as I ever smoked and got behind the wheel of a car, I found myself going the speed limit. I found myself between the lines. I found myself following the, the traffic lights. I didn't know where I was, but I knew that if I continued driving, it would come to me, and it always came to me. Always. So, I believe that 90% of the drug problem is prohibition-related, not use-related, and that is not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that should be the focus. Uh, judges in Portland, Oregon, when I was governor of New Mexico, wanted to meet with me. I didn't know how this meeting was going to go, but showed up, about six judges from Portland, Oregon, and what they said was, hey man, we're here to support what you're saying. We think that what you're saying is right on, but we would like to share with you a story here that anecdotally you might pass on to others that will help them better understand the drug issue. They said the methamphetamine is really the horrible drug. It's the horrible drug, it alters behavior, people that use methamphetamine do bad things. They said, but methamphetamine, these are the judges talking, but methamphetamine is the best example we can think of a prohibition drug. Wouldn't exist but for prohibition, because it's cheap and it's easy to make. These are the judges talking. We're not suggesting the following, but if cocaine were legal, these people would be using cocaine instead of methamphetamine without the negative behavioral consequence. Now, imagine if the government told the truth. Well, the truth when it comes to cocaine. Okay, you use cocaine, there's not this negative behavioral consequence. Actually, it's kind of a pleasant experience. But cocaine literally puts holes in your heart. You use cocaine and you are going to, at a point, you're going to die from a heart attack. Whitney Houston is just a typical, typical example of somebody that uses cocaine all their lives and then one day just en ends up dying. When I was governor of New Mexico, uh, one of the leading uh, publisher of one of uh, uh, a, daily, a daily newspaper here in this country, he said, uh, you know, I smoked pot when I was in college. I walked into the grocery store and the, and the pictures of the roaches on the roach cans came alive and you want to legalize this stuff? I said, my point exactly. You wanted to smoke a little beer weed, and you smoke some LSD weed. <laughs> Quantity, quality, unknown. This is prohibition. This is a prohibition phenomenon. Prohibition is what kills. Steve Jobs said LSD was his inspiration. That without LSD, he wouldn't be the human being or have the creativity that he had in his life. Well, in the mid-60s, a dose of windowpane acid visually is half the size of your small fingernail. Well, in the 60s, there were people, because of prohibition, that were taking doses of windowpane acid. They were taking sheets of windowpane acid, thinking that they could fly and jumping out of windows. That is a prohibition phenomenon. I guess you want to legalize heroin then too, right? <laughs> well. Do you realize that in Zurich, Switzerland, they have a heroin maintenance program in Zurich, Switzerland, where if you're an addict, you can get free heroin? And the idea is to was to reduce death, disease, 